live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, happy Saturday, and hey, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is 6 o'clock, it is December 30th. Good morning. Good morning, so you worked the last couple days. I have. In the morning, it has been frigid. It's been Our so fit temperatures. cold. I've been glad I was in studio and not out reporting. Sounds like you're rubbing it in. Yeah. But in the afternoon, Sarah Spivey, it's been gorgeous out there. It really has been. It's been one of those weeks, and, and it's going to be a weekend where you got to dress in layers because it's cold out there this morning. I mean, some places are even at freezing. Let's see. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're even at freezing. It's 32 in Bernie, 29 in Bulverde, 32 at Port SA, 31 in Bandera, 30 in Kerrville, but it's 39 in New Braunfels, 37 here in San Antonio at the airport, and it's 39 uh, in Pleasanton. Here's a look at this weekend. It's an extended weekend for us as we close out the year. Now, tomorrow's going to be very similar to today. Today we'll see a high of 70 degrees. Tomorrow's starting off at 37, topping off at 71. So, those days that you got to dress in layers. Then a front is going to arrive as we ring in the new year, and that's going to set up a windy and cool Monday. It's going to be hard for us to get out of the 50s on Monday. And by the way, next week, not only do we have opportunities for rain, but it's going to be a pretty chilly week. I've got those details coming up for you and your fireworks forecast for tomorrow in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man is dead after a shooting on the city's south side. This is the scene from a little after three this morning on Pennystone Avenue. That's right across from Highland Hills School. So SAPD say they arrived and found the victim on the front porch with a gunshot wound. That's when EMS came and declared him dead. Police haven't been able to identify the victim, but believe he's in his late 20s. SAPD has little information at this time, but we'll keep you updated online and on air. Well, one man in the hospital after being robbed and in the process, he was shot in the head. So take a look. This is what we know right now. It's unfolded just after 9 p.m. It's on Victor Street. It's actually near the Botanical Gardens. Now, police say the suspects, they were in the process of robbing the victim at his apartment during the robbery. The suspects shot him in the head before they quickly ran off. Now that victim taken to the hospital at last check in critical condition. A police searched the area and they found several gun shells. However, could not figure out who the suspects are. So if you have any information that can help in the investigation, you're asked to call 911 immediately. It's now been over a week since Savannah Soto, the 18 year old who was pregnant and Matthew Guetta disappeared. This is the security video on your screen right now that was released by San Antonio police. Both of them found dead along with their unborn child. Officers are calling the people you see in this video people of interest. Again, that surveillance video on your screen right now. Police say both Soto and Guetta were shot in the head. And if you know anything about that dark pickup, with the bed cover, you can see it in the back corner right there, or the people in this video, you're urged to call homicide detectives. Remember, you can remain anonymous. That number on your screen right now, 210-207-7674. One year after a man was shot and killed during a road rage situation, San Antonio police now have a second suspect. 20 one-year-old Arbeto Aguirre was arrested this week on a murder charge. The victim's family tells our Daniela Ibarra. That's right. She says that they're grateful for the arrest, but it says they're now worried for their own safety. It was so hard. I miss him so much. I miss his laugh. I, I miss his jokes. I just miss him. Joanne Quiroga is starting the second year without her dad, 49-year-old Ines Quiroga. He would always be like, Echale ganas, mijita. And I don't have that anymore, and it sucks because I've had so many hard days since that day. That December day is when Joanne and her aunt Sara want to forget, but can't. It's not the same. It's not the same without him. The stretch of Goliad near 410 is still hard for Joanne to drive by. She was here with her dad last year when he was killed in a road rage incident. I know what my dad, you know, getting off the car and confronting them was bad too, but what they did was worse because yes. my dad was not armed. Nearly two weeks after the shooting, police arrested 21-year-old Joe Longoria and charged him with murder. And this week, they caught the second murder suspect, 21-year-old Alberto Aguirre. Court records show both men posted bond and are on house arrest. Why are they 
you know, in house arrest when they should be locked up. That's why Sada says she fears for Joanne's safety. And I'm scared for her because they're, already, I mean, they're out. They can show up any, any minute. They want peace of mind and justice for Quirogas. I feel like justice would look like them being incarcerated. They killed a man yeah. in cold blood. For GMSA, I'm Daniela Ibarra. Thank you, Daniela. Well, a woman here in San Antonio was tricked into opening up her front door and getting carjacked and then kidnapped. But local police detectives, they say the suspect did not get away with it. Police actually making an arrest. 26-year-old Trevor Morse, who the victim says knocked on her door claiming to be injured. The victim says when she opened the door to let him in, a second person forced their way in with a gun, demanding car keys, then forcing her behind the wheel. The victim tells police they forced her to drive her to different locations before stopping in an apartment in the medical center, throwing her out of the vehicle. Morris was actually tracked down. Police found him in the victim's vehicle with a gun. He's now facing four charges, including aggravated kidnapping and robbery. Well, as the crisis continues at our southern border, volunteers are doing what they can to help migrants that are here in San Antonio. LULAC and local residents are putting together what they're calling dignity bags for children at the Migrant Resource Center. It's essentially a care package filled with items like baby wipes and chapstick. Some come with small toys and coloring books, and it's small things like these that mean the world to kids who are going through tough times. They're really close. They're Velcro to their caregiver. I mean, their their parent. They're scared. Lulac is asking for monetary donations, but also hygiene items. If you're interested in helping out or donating, we'll have that list of items that's needed and who to call. That's listed on our website, ksat.com. In your Texas headlines, several new laws will take effect this coming Monday after the new year, but. As most have to do with taxes, one of the most high-profile laws is actually banning diversity, equity, inclusion, DEI initiatives in higher education. Senate Bill 17 will prohibit DEI initiatives at public colleges and universities. Nearly a year ago, after Governor Greg Abbott had reportedly called on public institutions to stop considering diversity in the hiring process, UT Austin had paused their initiatives. DEI is essential to continue cultivating environments where all students and faculty feel represented and supported. So when Texas college students return to their campuses after their respective winter breaks, they're going to discover the lights still off on their campuses DEI programs. And this is again one of the many laws going into an effect here in the state of Texas on Monday. And we have an extensive list right now. Just head to KSAT.com. The U.S. Department of Justice is threatening to sue in order to stop a new Texas law that allows state police to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the border unless Governor Greg Abbott backs off from enforcing it. An agency official sent a letter this week to Governor Abbott saying, quote, Senate Bill 4 is unconstitutional and will disrupt the federal government's operations, end quote. The letter goes on to say if Texas does not hold back from enforcing the law by January 3rd, the agency will, quote, pursue all appropriate legal remedies to ensure that Texas does not interfere with the functions of the federal government, end quote. An Abbott spokesperson responded, saying Texas is prepared to fight all the way to the Supreme Court to defend Senate Bill 4. Abbott has responded, saying the Biden administration is destroying America while Texas is trying to save it. The DOJ has not responded to Abbott's comments. Well, the University of Texas is spirit song. Many of you know it well. It's called The Eyes of Texas. Again, it is, at, is in the spotlight. Black leaders in our state, they are formally requesting for the anthem not to be sung at the Sugar Bowl this Monday, where the Longhorns will face the Washington Huskies in the college football playoff. Now, the Texas Legislative Black Caucus and the Texas State Conference of the NAACP, they sent a letter this week to the college football playoff executive director and the organizers and the board of managers asking not to perform the song because of what black leaders describe as the tune's racially offensive history Adding, quote, this song should not be given a national audience, end quote. College football playoff officials, they have not yet responded. Again, the Sugar Bowl, it is this Monday, 745 at Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. Time now, just about 610, 40 degrees.
It's one of the busiest travel weekends of the year. After the break, we'll hear from the FAA on what we can expect this holiday season compared to last year's. Remember this, that travel meltdown? Uh, Southwest. <laughs> Plus, the San Antonio International Airport is what they're recommending to passengers. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. Speaking of the weekend, it is expected to be one of the busiest days at the airport across the country. Americans, they're returning home after the holiday rush and others, well, they're traveling to celebrate the start of 2024. The TSA is expecting to screen almost 3 million people at airports nationwide. AAA predicted 8 million passengers would take flight between last Saturday and this Monday, making it the busiest ever at U.S. airports. So compared to last year's holiday travel meltdown, <laughs> which I think we both covered pretty extensively, U.S. airlines have significantly improved. The FAA says they are prepared for the air traffic. We've been through it before. Uh, we have a command center in Virginia that really looks at the entire system where there's potentially weather, where there are delays. We communicate with the airlines and, and make sure we're running as smoothly as possible. So if you are flying San Antonio International, well, they are recommending the passengers arrive two hours before they board. Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you, but there's definitely a little bit of side eye. And of course, we want to take a look at the misery map going on around the country. Just kidding. We're going. We're going to check out to live cam first. I actually dropped off mm. my inbox at the airport this morning. Was it busy? Whoa. Yes, it was. So their flight um, boarding ended at 4.50 in the morning. Mm. And uh, my sister-in-law texted me after I dropped her off. She said, this is crazy. It, they had to wait for so long in lines and things really? like that. Yeah, so but what time already, was their flight? Their flight was like at 5 o'clock in the morning. So oh, it, wow. it, they were there early as what possible. What time did you drop them off? I dropped them off at uh, 3.45. That is not That's two not hours. two hours. That's no, barely an it hour. isn't, but you know, they I'd packed be a little pretty light. Too. They packed pretty light. They so. made it. Yeah, and you think like, oh, okay, that early things aren't going to be that busy, but they were they were very busy wow. already. So it was cold too this morning, and it oh, is yeah. cold out there. Take a look at temperatures. It's in the 30s. Some places are at freezing. It's freezing in Bernie, freezing in Bulverde, 31 in Hondo, 31 in Bandera, 37 in Castroville. Some folks, though, above freezing at the airport. It's technically above freezing, 37 degrees. This morning I saw a little frost on my car, so a little frost is possible out there early this morning, but we're not really looking at at uh, anything cold for too long because we'll have abundant sunshine, dry air in place. That means a quick warm up. We're going to be already 20 degrees warmer than how we started the day by 10. So just in the next couple of hours here by noon, it'll be 64 and sunny and a high today right around 70 degrees. So a 30, 35 degree temperature jump from the start of the day to the afternoon. It's going to be 69 in Del Rio, 71 in Carrizo Springs, 73 in Catula, Gonzalez. You'll be at 68, 69 in Canyon Lake, 68 in Kerrville, and 69 in Hondo. A beautiful, beautiful day uh, last Saturday of 2023. Let's take a look at the weather setup right now across the nation. Yeah, we've got quite a bit of rain across California and some snow across New England. There's a system in the northern tier of the United States that's just going to continue to reinforce the dry and cool air we're seeing here around San Antonio. Uh, we've got a cold front working through the Dakotas right now. Again, it is very dry across the nation. There's hardly a spot around the nation that is humid at the moment. Most of us are dealing with dry, dry, dry air in place. And this cold front, which is going to move through tomorrow night after midnight, is going to keep things dry and cold for us. Take a look at temperatures across the nation. Generally chilly across the lower 48. 30 in Austin, 27 in Lubbock, 25 in Bismarck, 28 in Omaha. No cold arc Arctic air, just the typical wintry, colder air that we're seeing out there. So what is this front going to do? Well, the next couple of days will be warm in the afternoon, 70 today, 70 tomorrow. But with that front moving through tomorrow night, highs in the week ahead, my friends, are going to be in the 40s and 50s. So it's going to be a chilly stretch of weather here next week, particularly on Tuesday when I expect some dampness. That front is also going to make it pretty windy for the first uh, day of 2024. By Monday morning, we'll have wind gusts from the north at 25, 30 miles per hour. Unfortunately, that is not good news because 
Mountain Cedar. Mountain Cedar is likely going to stay fairly elevated in the coming days with that front. Again, wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour possible on New Year's Day and temperatures will be much cooler. So what about New Year's Eve? What about tomorrow's firework forecast? Well, the front's not going to move through until after midnight, so it shouldn't be too windy tomorrow. Sunsets at 545 and temperatures will be cooling to near 50 degrees by midnight, so a little chilly. You'll also notice a few increasing clouds, but those clouds shouldn't get in the way of any firework displays. And again, the biggest thing I think next week is an opportunity for rain both on Tuesday and Friday, and our highs are only going to be in the 40s and 50s. We'll be talking a little bit more about our rain possibility on Tuesday coming up in the next half hour. But, you know, we've had to dress in layers uh, the last several days. Next week, you're going to want the jacket with you all throughout the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. When is the mostly the coldest time of the year here in San Antonio. It's right around now. Okay. Yeah, it's right around January. So end of December and January. So this is it. We just get through the next month and we're good to go. Hey, you Max, can do it, Max. You can do it. Mr. You know, Northeast, you're going to be I okay. We are, for a reason. I don't know about you, but I take this weather over the Texas summers anytime. Me too. <laughs> I'm there with you, Sarah. I disagree. <laughs> time now, 618. It is a cold 39 degrees. Okay, Max doesn't like cold weather, but he does like ice cream. Love ice cream. And HEB has made a limited edition ice cream for one Texas resident, and Love the flavor story. will surprise you. That's after the break. While kids sent letters to Santa this season, a Bernie fifth grader named Cora sent a letter to HEB asking for her three favorite HEB ice creams, cookies and cream, the chocolatey Texas Starry Night and the Minty Grasshopper mm. all to be combined into one carton. All right, so H-E-B, like Santa, did exactly that. The carton is now called Cora's Creation and it was made just for her, so it is not even for sale. Hey, they need to market this. This sounds amazing. Her mom says Cora went on and on about it being the coolest day ever and that she yeah. couldn't believe it happened. That's amazing. And that she isn't sharing with her siblings. Oh I wonder goodness. if she's already finished her carton, her carton of ice cream. I mean, okay. I you know it'd, it'd be, be over. It'd be done like yeah. in a day. What's your favorite flavor? Rocky Road. Okay. Yeah. All right. You? Time now. I don't know. I gotta think about this. Okay. Time now. 6:23, 38 degrees. Did you ask Google for health advice this year? No. no. Regrettingly, yes. <laughs> we'll take a look at the top health-related searches after the break. Terrified. Good morning and welcome back. Obviously, it is very common for people to search the internet, try to get answers to health issues. So, Google releasing the top trending health-related questions searched in 2023. Turns out, it's strep throat. Wow. The top search is how long is strep contagious for? Oh my goodness. And I need to reiterate this. If you don't feel well, go, don't go to work. You're just gonna get everyone else sick. Or Other call the doctor. <laughs> Other top searches include how to lower cholesterol, that makes sense, and what helps bloating. Oh. Google says, I mean, it's, uh, look, yeah. it's real. Those are legitimate things, though. Google says those questions saw high spikes in traffic compared to last year. Just don't Google your symptoms mm. because it's always like, you have the worst disease. Yeah, You're going to die. It's like, the WebMD. And then I get freaked out. Yeah. Yeah, just call the doctor. That's fair. All right, time now, 627, 38 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 6.30 this morning. It is Saturday, December 30th. It is the last Saturday of all of 2023. Oh my gosh. I know. Cherish it. Yeah. Live it up. There you go. All right, do you have any good plans to celebrate the new year? We're going to Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Nice. Never been, so I'll let you know when I get back. Okay, I'm excited to hear about it. Yeah, it's, it's, we're going with a bunch of friends. It should be fun. Okay, Sarah Spivey, what about yourself? My parents will be in town, so I'll be ringing in the new year with them. Really excited about that. It is uh, cold out there, though, right now. The last several days, you've had to dress in layers. Cold mornings, comfortable afternoons, not needing the jacket. Today's going to be same. the same. Take a look at temperatures out there right now. It's even below freezing in some parts of the hill country. Kerrville at 29, 31 in Hondo, 31 in Uvalde. It's freezing in Eagle Pass and in Crease of Springs, but it's 37 here in San Antonio, 39 in New Braunfels. Would it be surprised if you live in some of the higher elevations in Bear County, if you see some frost on your car or things like that early this morning? But again, today is one of those days where 
the afternoon is going to be just beautiful. Around noon, we'll already be in the 60s. Sunny skies, 70 degrees for the high. West southwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming chilly when the sun sets after 545. Temperatures will be back in the 40s by midnight. We've got a lot to talk about. Dry and sunny end to 2023, but as we ring in the new year, we're going to get a cold front, and that front is going to set up a chilly start to the year, and in fact, we'll even have a chance for some rain. I'll talk about rainfall potential and the chilly and damp conditions expected on Tuesday. Details coming up. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The CDC says flu activity is very high in two thirds of the country with a surge of cases and hospitalizations across the U.S. The CDC estimates more than 7 million people have had the flu this season with 73,000 patients hospitalized and 4,500 deaths. Health officials are encouraging people to get a flu shot and say if you get sick, to see a doctor immediately and, like Max said earlier, stay at home, don't come to work, and stay away from others. All right, now to politics. Maine's Secretary of State, she's getting a lot of pushback from a lot of Republicans, all in the wake of her decision to not have Donald Trump on the Maine 2024 primary ballot. So the Democrat, Shanna Bellows, well, she cites the 14th Amendment's insurrection ban for her reasoning to knock Trump off the ballot. But Senate Republicans, they're calling the move, quote-unquote, Political posturing now, a Maine state representative has filed a request to impeach Bellows, calling her decision hyperpartisan. Or barring an American citizen who happens to be the 45th president of the United States from the ballot when he's met all other uh, qualifications without any conviction for insurrection or even impeachment. Andrew says he believes he can get enough of what he calls honorable uh, Democrats in the legislature to go along with him in an impeachment. Meanwhile, Bellows telling CNN just yesterday that her office has received various threats. A source says that former President Donald Trump, his legal team, expected to file appeals next week. And New Year's Eve celebrations are underway as we get ready to ring in 2024. And that means security is tight across the country, especially in the heart of New York City. Thousands of New York police officers are getting ready to deploy across the area. They are planning to expand their security perimeter as they look for anything out of place or suspicious people. They'll be using dogs, drones and spectator checkpoints. We know how to safeguard events of this size. Uh, we have major events going on at one time in the city. And with the collaboration of all of our agencies and organizations, we get it right and we do it right all the time. Just to clarify, there are no specific or credible threats right now, but a federal assessment says a celebration in New York is an attractive target for terrorists and extremists. Police across the country are still encouraging people to go out and enjoy themselves, but also reminding everyone, if you see something, say something. Well, no matter the time of year, drinking too much alcohol, it's never good for you. But many of us may use the holidays as an excuse to overindulge. But as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us, there are some tips that you could use to incorporate a favorite wine, beer, or cocktail into your happy and healthy celebrations. Ashley Pardo has a strategy for staying healthy at all those holiday parties. Try to eat beforehand. Uh, and to have something in your stomach. That way you're not going into the party ravenous. Besides the cookies and snacks, a lot of people like to enjoy an alcoholic drink. Maybe you've even heard that a glass is actually good for your health, but not to be a Grinch. Everyone who drinks could probably benefit from cutting back. The latest research really shows that there's no health benefit to alcohol. However, if you stick to the current guidelines, which is one drink a day for women or two drinks a day for men, your risk of adverse health effects may be small depending on your personal health situation. If you tend to overindulge, she says, consider your potential risks like age, health and family history. If alcohol abuse, heart disease or cancer run in your family, you may want to be careful. Still, Consumer Reports says there are ways to imbibe mindfully. Reach for drinks with lower amounts of alcohol. Use a smaller glass and take time to enjoy. A misconception that we have when it comes to food and alcohol is that pleasure from these things doesn't come from the quantity. It comes from the degree of your attention. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Hey, Spurs won one, guys. And while they had a great night on Thursday, there we go. Love the fans. 
Heartbreaker last night, taking on the Blazers. The Blazers took advantage of Wemby not playing, beating the Spurs 134 to 128. Splitting the series 1 1 out the big man, stepping up in the spot. Keldon Johnson scoring 27 points for San Antonio. Spurs did cut it down to just five in the final seconds. Portland was 16 of 27 from three, while San Antonio was 14 of 33. Now, head coach Greg Popovich says the Spurs played, again, quote unquote, horrendously. Taking a look at the final score, like we said, 128 to 134. It's not going to get much easier because the Spurs hosting one of the, if not the best team in the league tomorrow, the Boston Celtics. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. How about them Cowboys? Starting to get back to their winning ways, at least they hope. Dallas now losing two straight and, well, they're hoping it'll get easier. Tonight, Dallas Cowboys welcoming the newly crowned kings of the jungle of the NFC North, the Detroit Lions. They're going to look for their 12th season, or 12th one of the season, for the first time since 1991. I think Barry Sanders is on that team. And members of the Cowboys defense, they're looking to shut down the third best offensive in the NFL. Now guys on both sides of the ball, they gave their take on what they're going to look for when it comes to the Lions. Yeah, they have a pretty good pass rush. Uh, they have a lot of playmakers on their defense, a lot of speed. Uh, and so we just have to, like I said, play our play our standard of ball and focus on us. And then obviously uh, it'll take care of itself. We uh, just go out there and make the plays that we know we can make and continue and to, to grow together as this offense uh, moves forward going into this run we're about to have. I think it's a run game. You know, they, they, they blocking pretty good. Um, they getting a lot of yards in the run game and then they play action pass. They get you coming up and they throw it over top. So um, that's what they're good at. And Jerry Goff been in the league for a while. He's seen a lot of football and he's playing well. Again, kickoff tonight, 7:15. And here's the best part: you don't even need to change the channel. It's going to be right here on KSAT. We're also going to have live updates through the day from Arlington, plus a post-game report from our own Mary Rominger. Speaking of football. College football, UTSA, seeing another roadrunner announce he's looking for another opportunity after just being named the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl defensive MVP. Cam Alexander announcing this week he is entering the transfer portal, portal in his one year at UTSA. He was first team all ACC selection and with one year of eligibility left. And also this week, Judson alum Rashad Wisdom announced he is headed to the NFL draft. Remember, he did suffer that arm injury during the Frisco Bowl. Ruled out for the rest of the game, but we caught up with him after the Roadrunners won as he reflected on the game and, of course, reflecting at his time at UTSA. I'm happy with the way the guys play, man, and I'm just glad we was able to go get our first bowl win, man. I feel like, you know, this just kind of adds the cherry on top, if you you know were to say. Um, you know, I mean, I feel like we're legendary. This is something that can't be re rewritten and, you know, like I said, just happy at the way that we were able to go play and finish off the game. And we are in bowl season. The most entertaining game of the day came from the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Now comes to take it on Kentucky, and the Cats take it a fourth quarter shot. Look at that 60 yard touchdown pass. Devin Leary to Darian Brown. Retaking the lead after a Clemson field goal. Kentucky hands it off to Ray Davis going back again, but the Tigers would get the last lap, bashing his way for the game winning touchdown. Phil Maffa. Clemson capping off a nine-win season, 38-35 win in the Gator Bowl. Back to the Cowboys that are playing 7-15 tonight on KSAT. I'm predicting big Cowboys win. Ooh. Big Cowboys win. See, I want to predict that, no, too, as Cowboys a Cowboys win. fan, but I just... Ah, I'm Here's having, the thing. Two, having trust issues. Two sh I understand that. Two straight <laughs> losses. Dak's coming back. They're going to be at home. At home, right. which they're much better at. Mm -hmm. Detroit has a terrible secondary. So CeeDee Lamb is going to eat. I really hope... You're right, Mac. Yeah. All right. Time now, 640, 40 degrees. The fertilizer that comes out of this is garden gold. Ah, uh, okay. After the new break, after the break, a new partnership between local composters and the Alamo Dome is turning trash into what gardeners like to call it, treasure. Oh, look at that. Taking a live look out there. All right. We're at least the bottom right of your screen. Says it is already 40 degrees. Hopefully it keeps warming up throughout the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. Someone else's trash to good use. Expired lettuce, fruit, and other good food scraps are going to end up in the landfill. Now they're being divvied up by local farmers. I love this story. So Christina Warren tells our Patty Santos how her partnership with the Alamo Dome kitchen staff has created a movement Ew. 
Look at behind us. In a matter of months. What's going on? This is trash that you're picking up. Yes, this is what people would call trash, but it is gold for the garden. Rotten tomatoes, cucumbers, and other scraps. Happy, happy worms. A gourmet feast for the thousands of red wiggler worms in Christiana Ren Rogers' backyard. They compost half their body weight every day in food waste. Ren Rogers says her worms can live anywhere from one to five years and double in size every 90 days. She keeps them happy to eat and poop. The fertilizer that comes out of this is garden gold. Much of what they eat comes from the Alamo Dome and other kitchens, up to 25 buckets of scraps each week. We started with grass clippings, uh, leaves, so much cardboard, all your browns, and then we started with the greens, which is the kitchen waste from the Alamo Dome. Over the summer, Kevin Arzani asked to take home spoiled or rotten leftovers and scraps from the Alamo Dome kitchen. Oh, it's a good feeling knowing that it's not wasted. Members of the San Antonio Composting Project have collected and divvied up an estimated four tons of scraps since September. We'll do about half in this one. Yes, ma'am. Are you ready now? Sure. The group is made up of backyard gardeners like Arzani and Ren Rogers. Because everything that is being processed makes your soil specifically more rich and advanced. Good soil to grow a strong garden. The black stuff are the worm castings. But they say their project is doing more than that. All of this food uh, waste would end up in our landfills. Correct. There's about 50% of what we throw away can be composted. And that affects not only the landfill capacities, but how much methane, how much carbon footprint we're using. Moving forward, the goal is to invite other food handlers to support their composting movement. I encourage backyard composting, even if you're not a gardener. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Go Completely off. Completely yeah. agree. I mean, this is great. Mm -hmm. You don't want your food waste going into the landfill because that you know, goes into global warming and, you know, puts so up all carbon even, into the atmosphere. Even if you don't want something that extensive, you have a, a less... Okay, so I'm going to do a story on it later on. Um, the city gives you these little plastic compost bins. So anytime you're, you're you know, your food, food scraps, scraps yeah. coffee, mm -hmm. a lot of coffee grains, or what do they call it? Coffee grinds. grinds. Yeah. They go in there, um, you know, old paper plates that are used. They go in there and then you put them in your green bin that the city provides you. Okay. Yeah. Definitely need to take advantage of that. Looking forward to that story, okay. Sarah. It is going to be a beautiful day to be outside and enjoy our city. Now, it's cold outside right now, but we will quickly warm up and we'll have a dry and sunny end to 2023 the next couple of days. Then I want to talk about how there will be a front arriving tomorrow night ahead of New Year's Day, making for a windy and chilly change. In fact, by Tuesday, we'll be struggling to get out of the 40s on Tuesday because we'll have areas of rain. Take a look outside right now a beautiful start to the day we're already starting to see the sunrise the first color of your Saturday it is 37 chilly degrees outside low humidity and with that low humidity in place we're quickly going to warm up it's 28 in Kerrville 32 in Comfort 30 in Bandera 31 in Hondo you can see that many areas are briefly touching freezing here before we see the sun fully rise 39 in New Braunfels and 35 at Stinson by the way if you have some frost maybe out on your car or things like that make sure to send in pictures on KSAT Connect. I would love to be able to show those a little bit later today. It is going to be a quick warm up. Even in the span of just three hours, we're going to see temperatures rise by some 20 degrees. By 10, it'll be 53. Around noon, 64. We'll have west southwest winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. 70 degrees for the high temperature today and quickly cooling after sunset. It's going to be 66 in Holotus, 69 in New Braunfels, 68 in Seguin, 71 in Floresville, 68 in Uvalde, 69 in Canyon Lake, and 68 in Kerrville. Take a look at the temperature trend over the next few days. Again, I mentioned that we're going to be sunny and dry as we end the year, but then a front arrives tomorrow night into Monday, into New Year's Day. Not only is that going to make us windy on New Year's Day with a wind from the north gusting up to 30 miles per hour, but it's also going to allow for our highs to be in the 40s and 50s. So in the next week, you will want the jacket all day long. We've been able to kind of dress in layers the last few days, but next week you're going to want that jacket all day long. And take a look at Tuesday. We start off in the 30s and we struggle to get out of the 40s on Tuesday. That's because Tuesday is our next shot at rain. We're going to get a trough of low pressure moving across the state and we'll have some areas of rainfall on Tuesday, perhaps even a rumble of thunder or two. Then we'll see a break from the rain before on Friday, another opportunity with 
another low pressure system moving across the state of Texas. Friday is our another opportunity for rain in the week ahead. How much rain? Well, once again, San Antonio area is kind of going to be on the tail end of things when it comes to the very healthy rainfall out across parts of East Texas, closer to Houston, about two inches of rain. But around San Antonio, I think half an inch of rain both Tuesday and Friday. So as a total half an inch of rain, not half an inch each day and perhaps up to an inch out West, east a little bit further toward Hallettsville, less than a half an inch for areas like Del Rio, Uvalde and Eagle Pass. Let's put it all together for you in the planning forecast here again. A warm day today in the afternoon and tomorrow after a cold start. Then we're going to spend most of next week in the 50s and in the 40s, an opportunity for rain on Tuesday and an opportunity on Friday. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to getting a good use out of my winter coat uh, for the next uh, week. Just, you know, we don't get to use it that often here. By the way, guys, mm. speaking of temperatures, this year is likely going to be our hottest, will be our hottest year on record in San Antonio. It's crazy because in San Antonio proper, we haven't, we haven't gotten like a real freeze yet. And usually by this time we have. Yeah, we've had a, we've had a freeze in the morning, but we haven't had any ice events or right. anything like that. Right, or like, like a that. hard freeze, not like, a, exactly. like we've had before. We haven't had to worry about our pipes. Let's not jinx us here, guys. Come on. Knock on we'll wood. see. Hey, if, it, if the weather changes, you'll be the first to know. I'll That's why you. we have Sarah here. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 651, 39 degrees. Hot. All right, so the Pop-Tarts mascot <laughs> drawing a lot of attention on social media after rising out of a life-size toaster both before and after the game. The pastry, a rising star on social media <laughs> and users making all the videos. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. He's so good. So good. So fantastic. Dreams really do come true. Look at that. <laughs> Just fantastic. I want the guy or woman, whoever mm -hmm. is actually. Is the Pop-Tart mask? Yeah. They are hero. loving this. Hero. Yeah. And they, no one knows who no one knows. the real hero behind the Pop-Tart is. Look at that. Yeah. I saw one of the, my favorite posts was someone used it and said, Europe will never understand. They will never understand. <laughs> Understand. Time now, 655, 40 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Hey there, good morning. Coming up here on GMA, major storm threat in the West. California bracing for more dangerous high surf, plus the damage from that rogue wave that washed ashore. Incredible pictures there. And the New Year's Eve forecast from coast to coast. Our weather team, of course, has it all. And the safety preparations underway across the country ahead of those New Year's Eve celebrations. What you need to know. Plus, Monday night football moves to tonight. A preview of the Detroit Lions and Dallas Cowboys and the bowl games being played on New Year's Day. And there is Still hope to walk into the new year a millionaire. The Powerball jackpot tonight, the payout you could take home. That is all ahead right here on GMA. Happy New Year. As 2023 is set to come to a close, we're taking a look back at all the great pictures you've Aww. shared with us this year over KSAT Connect right now on KSAT.com. You too can look at some of the most viewed pictures Ooh. over the past 12 months. Just look for this article. Speaking of KSAT Connect, make sure to post some KSAT Connect pictures Ooh. either of this sunrise or some frost out there. It's pretty chilly. It's 28 no. in Bulverde. I will be staying inside. <laughs> Too cold. As we take a look at the high today, 70 yeah. degrees, 71 tomorrow after a cold start. And then we'll ring in the new year with a cold front. That'll set up a chilly week ahead. Well, our highs will only be in the 40s and 50s, and we'll have an opportunity for rain on Tuesday and Friday. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour long break. See you back here at AM. See y'all at 8. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are taking a live look. Yeah, look at that. It is gorgeous Beautiful. out there to start the day, except for when you look at the bottom right of your screen where it says <laughs> it's 38 degrees. That part, not so beautiful. It is going to heat up. It is going to be another phenomenal San Antonio weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is the last Saturday 
of 2023. So make it a good one. Make it, make a good it one. count. You already started. I mean, you're, you're joining us to start the weekend, so you're already oh, making it a Max. great Saturday. Look at that. Good point, Max. Yeah. But yes, yeah, Sarah Spivey, it is cold out there. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, it is cold out there. Temperatures are in the 30s. We've even had some areas get down to freezing this morning. I saw a little bit of frost in my neighborhood on the cars and elevated surfaces, but it's 30 in Bernie right now, 30 in Bulverde, 37 in San Antonio, 35 in Port S. 32 in Comfort and 29 in Kerrville. Following a very familiar weather pattern today of cold mornings and comfortable afternoons, that'll be the case. 70 degrees today for the high. Tomorrow, another cold morning near 37 with a high right around 71. Then tomorrow night after midnight, after we ring in the new year into early Monday morning, we'll get a cold front that'll move through. Not only will this front make it windy and cooler on Monday with highs only in the 50s, but it also kind of kick starts a cool week next week. Uh, we'll even have the opportunity for some rain at times during the week next week and temperatures may struggle to get out of the 40s a couple days. So we've got a big update to the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We got a lot of news to get to, especially locally. Now, happening overnight, we now know one man dead after a shooting on the southeast side. Take a look. This is the scene just after 3 a.m. This is on Pennystone Avenue right across from Highland Hill School. Now, SAPD tells us when they arrived, they found the victim right on the front porch with a gunshot wound. That's when EMS came, pronounced that man dead on the scene. Police still not identifying. They believe he is in his late 20s. A police has little information to go off on this shooting. We do expect more info through the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online. A man is in the hospital after he was robbed and shot in the head. This happened after 9 p.m. on Victor Street. This is near the Botanical Gardens in Mankey Park. SAPD says the suspects were in the process of robbing the victim at his apartment. And during the robbery, they shot him in the head before they quickly ran off. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police searched the area and found several casings, but nothing to figure out who could have done this. If you have any info, you're urged to call police. And yesterday marked one week since 18-year-old pregnant Savannah Soto and Matthew Guetta disappeared. This is the security video released yesterday by San Antonio Police. So go ahead and take a look on your screen. In their case, both of them found dead along with their unborn child. Officers calling the people you see in the video people of interest. Now, investigators say both Soto and Guetta shot in the head. If you have any information about that dark pickup with a bed cover or the people in the video, you're asked to call Homicide Detectives. That number on your screen at the bottom left, 210-207-7674. Remember, any tips can be anonymous. Well, one year after a man was shot and killed in a road rage situation, San Antonio police now have a second suspect. 21-year-old Alberto Aguirre was arrested this week on a murder charge. The victim's family telling our Danielle Ibarra they're grateful for the arrest, but they say they're now worried for their own safety. It was so hard. I miss him so much. I miss his laugh. I, I miss his jokes. I just miss him. Joanne Quiroga is starting the second year without her dad, 49-year-old Ines Quiroga. He would always be like, Echale ganas, mijita. And I don't have that anymore. And it sucks because I've had so many hard days since that day. That December day is when Joanne and her aunt Sara want to forget, but can't. It's not the same. It's not the same without him. The stretch of Goliad near 410 is still hard for Joanne to drive by. She was here with her dad last year when he was killed in a road rage incident. I know what my dad, you know, getting off the car and confronting them was bad too, but what they did was worse because yes. my dad was not armed. Nearly two weeks after the shooting, police arrested 21-year-old Joe Longoria and charged him with murder. And this week, they caught the second murder suspect, 21-year-old Alberto Aguirre. Court records show both men posted bond and are on house arrest. Why are they, you know, in house arrest when they should be locked up? That's why Sara says she fears for Joanne's safety. And I'm scared for her because they're, already, I mean, they're out. They can show up any, any minute. They want peace of mind and justice for Quirogas. I feel like justice would look like them being incarcerated. They killed a man yeah. in cold blood. For GMSA, I'm Daniela Ibarra. 
Well, as the crisis continues at our southern border, local volunteers, they're doing what they can to help migrants who made their way here to San Antonio. Young children, especially those here in our city, they're having a difficult time. That's why LULAC and other volunteers, they're putting together what they're calling dignity bags for kids at the Migrant Resource Center. Essentially, it's a care package filled with items like baby wipes and chapstick. Now, some bags come with small toys, even coloring books. And it's small things like this that means the world to kids who are traveling the world going through tough times. They're really close. They're Velcro to their caregiver. I mean, their, their parent. They're scared. LULAC is asking for monetary donations, but also donations of hygiene items. If you're interested in helping, we have a list of all the items needed, how to step up and help out. Just head to KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, you remember that Chinese surveillance balloon that crossed the country earlier this year before being shot down by the U.S. military? After its seven-day journey, well, now U.S. intelligence agencies have found that the balloon used an American Internet service provider to send short periodic transmissions of data related to navigation and location back to China. According to U.S. officials, the network connection was not used to transmit intelligence back to China. Instead, the balloon stored that information, including imagery and data, for later. Well, the Secretary of State in Maine joining Colorado deciding that Donald Trump is ineligible to be president, kicking the former president off the Maine primary ballot. But not all states agree on the decision. Overnight, California's Secretary of State, they chose to leave Trump on California's ballot for the Republican primary, despite calls from even the lieutenant governor to remove him. For now, the decision on if states can move forward has been put on hold. That is, until the United States Supreme Court makes the final call. Well, San Antonio nonprofit making it cool to be a dork, but it's not what you think. The acronym stands for Downtowner Overdose Response Kit. John Paul Baraja shows us how the nonprofit is helping hotel, bar, restaurant, and other service workers know what to do when facing an overdosing customer. And that's going to include um, nasal spray, naloxone. Learning new things doesn't make you a dork. It makes me feel empowered, and, you know, knowledge is power. And learning how to respond to an overdose and administer Narcan doesn't either. But training at a modern terno in Southtown this week sent participants home with just that. A downtowner's overdose response kit, a.k.a. a dork. I was at, at a music festival a couple years ago, and no one really knew what to do. Vinton Guerrero and dozens of others wanted to learn just that, how to save someone from an overdose. According to the CDC, from January 2021 to January 2022, more than 107,000 people died of an overdose in the U.S. Being, being a survivor of an overdose, um, being, being brought back to life by uh, using Narcan, um, people helping, helping save my life by utilizing Narcan, um, it, it, it's really a passion of mine today. Scott Dion and Tina Rodriguez with Corazon Ministries is targeting service industry employees to train, saying for those employees, seeing drug use is more prevalent. But at anyone who is able to identify the signs of an overdose could save a life. Pale skin, um, gurgling, coughing, uh, sleepiness, drowsiness, pinpointed pupils. With the fentanyl today, right, it's, it's, it's cut in almost in anything and everything, right, from the cocaine to the methamphetamines to the heroin, and they're even sprinkling it in the marijuana. Downtown overdose response kit comes with a nasal spray and injections to help prevent overdoses, as well as a breathing barrier to help provide oxygen. To request one of those kits or in-person training, you can go to Gordeson Ministries' website. We'll have a link to that on ksat.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 8.09, 38 degrees. Before we head to break, 2023 is set to come to a close, and we're taking a look back at some of the most read stories on KSAT.com of this year. It includes that list of deadly dog attacks, shooting at North Star Mall, to Adam Sandler being spotted at the Pearl Brewery. Ooh. You can see our complete list right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Plus, credit card skimmers. It's a scam that many people have been affected by. Still ahead, what signs to look out for so it doesn't affect you and your finances. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. I gotta say, I'm much happier in the afternoon because these weekend mornings have been freezing. It's been a little cold for you, huh? A little bit, a little too cold. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, been the, that'll be the case today, too. You're a Texas princess now. 100%.
Love it. Love the title. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to quickly warm today. That's the theme outside right now. Temperatures are still freezing at Bernie, Bulverde, Comfort and Kerrville. So the higher elevations in the hill country, we're seeing a brief freeze. But here in San Antonio, it's 37. As you can see, the sun is out. So temperatures are quickly going to warm from here on out. We'll be in the 70s this afternoon. Take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Nothing but sunshine today with low humidity. 50 at 1064 at noon. High temperature of 70 degrees right around 3 or 4 o'clock and a west wind at about 5 miles per hour. Later on tonight, as expected, it'll get chilly again after sunset. Temperatures in the 40s by midnight for us here in San Antonio. Take a look at your neighborhood. Here's a look at highs. 68 in Kerrville, 69 in Del Rio and in Eagle Pass, 68 in Gonzales, 71 in Beeville, 73 in Catula, 69 in Canyon Lake, 68 in Austin. A gorgeous day uh, across all of South Central Texas. Now, as we look at the weather setup, it is quiet across Texas. Broader view, quiet across the Central Plains, but we do have some heavy rain for parts of California, some snowfall for parts of New England. There is a cold front and low pressure system working its way through the Great Lakes area right now. Now, as I'm going to show you the humidity map, I want you to notice how dry it is across the nation. Really, other than the rain in California, it is fairly dry. This cold front going to reinforce that drier air, keep that drier air in place for a good portion of next week and also also reinforce some colder air too. Again, it's cold across the nation and the lower 48. In fact, here in San Antonio, 37, it's colder than it is in New York City early this morning. Now that front will be moving through on uh, tomorrow night into Monday. So our highs are going to take a pretty strong dip. We've been able to uh, go with the short sleeves in the afternoon with highs near 70 degrees, but all next week you're going to want the jacket all day every day of the week next week. And even on Tuesday, you can see that we'll struggle to get out of the 40s. That's because Tuesday is going to be a damp day and a chilly day at that too. Now with that front moving through tomorrow into Monday morning, we're also going to see our winds continue to pick up from the north. What's to the north of San Antonio? those mountain cedar trees. So unfortunately, I do expect mountain cedar to continue to be high, even with the possibility of some rain on Tuesday. Mountain cedar is still going to be an issue today. Here's an updated look at the pollen count. Mountain cedar is high. It's down from yesterday, but it's still high. And again, mountain cedar season peaks in mid January, so we still got a ways to go. Molds are low. Now, what about New Year's Eve fireworks forecast tomorrow night? That front is not going to move through until after midnight, so I don't expect very windy conditions tomorrow for any firework displays. I do expect increasing clouds though, so it'll be mostly cloudy by midnight and a little bit chilly, but with the cloudy skies, uh, we will not that will not impact uh, firework displays. So that's some good news too. Taking a look at the forecast over the next several days, couple more days in the 70s before we're going to be chilly next week. In the next half hour, we're going to talk a little bit more about our rainfall potential on Tuesday. Again, Tuesday is going to be a chilly and damp day uh, with high struggling to get out of the 40s. And Sarah, I see that you have windy on New Year's Eve is that going to be into the night as well for when people are popping fireworks? So again, it's not going to get windy until after uh, New Year, after midnight. Okay. So we won't be seeing too many That's uh, good. instances of knocked over fireworks because of the wind. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 816, 38 degrees. Enjoying the holidays may include, you know, a glass or two of champagne or wine, but if you're looking to celebrate in a healthier way, Consumer Reports has some tips that could still have you cheering without drinking too much. No matter the time of year, drinking too much alcohol, it's not good for you. But many of us may use the holidays as an excuse to overindulge. All right, but as 12 Inch Sides Marilyn Moritz tells us, there are some tips that you could use to incorporate a favorite wine, beer, or cocktail into your happy and healthy celebrations. Just make sure you don't go overboard. Ashley Pardo has a strategy for staying healthy at all those holiday parties. Try to eat beforehand. Uh, and to have something in your stomach. That way you're not going into the party ravenous. Besides the cookies and snacks, a lot of people like to enjoy an alcoholic drink. Maybe you've even heard that a glass is actually good for your health, but not to be a Grinch. Everyone who drinks could probably benefit from cutting back. The latest research really shows that there's no health benefit to alcohol. 
However, if you stick to the current guidelines, which is one drink a day for women or two drinks a day for men, your risk of adverse health effects may be small depending on your personal health situation. If you tend to overindulge, she says, consider your potential risks like age, health, and family history. If alcohol abuse, heart disease, or cancer run in your family, you may want to be careful. Still, Consumer Reports says there are ways to imbibe mindfully. Reach for drinks with lower amounts of alcohol. Use a smaller glass and take time to enjoy. A misconception that we have when it comes to food and alcohol is that pleasure from these things doesn't come from the quantity. It comes from the degree of your attention. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 821, 39 degrees. After the break, you may have been gifted one of these items on this recall list. A look at what you need to throw away right away. Good morning, welcome back. We have a lot of recall alerts to tell you about. First one, Walmart recalling about 4,200 toy kits that could actually cause deadly injuries to small children. Take a look. Toys in question, they are the Relax 5mm Science Kit with magnetic balls. Now, they were sold exclusively on Walmart.com. CPSC says parents should take the magnetic balls away from the kids immediately due to them being small enough to swallow and pose a deadly choking hazard. Also on the recall list, a popular portable blender, BlendJet is recalling close to 5 million of its BlendJet 2 portable blenders because of a possible fired and fire and laceration hazard. So the CPSC says the blenders can overheat or catch fire and the blades can break off. Blendjet says there have been 49 reports of minor burns and one report of someone actually getting cut. The portable blenders were sold at Costco, Walmart and Target from 2020 through November of this year. Time now, 826, 41 degrees. 41 degrees, still too cold for Max Massey. I'd say 50 degrees is like the line of demarcation. Who's the man who grew up in the Northeast? Oh, I moved to Texas for <laughs> multiple reasons, the weather being one of them, but it is a gorgeous day. There's not a cloud in the sky. And don't worry, for you, those of you out there who hate the cold as much as I do, it's gonna get warm. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. All right, it is just about 8.30. It's Saturday. We're at the end of December. It's 41 degrees. What is like the line in the sand for you with cold? I think this is great. You think this is great? Yeah. Max, after the triple digits for so mm. many days, like I used to not be like a cold, cold temps girly, mm. and now I'm full down. Like I love. You love the cold. I love the cold. You love the cold. So for people who aren't <laughs> here in the studio, she loves the cold so much she puts the thermostat on 80 degrees in the studio. <laughs> well, know. you know. It's like I love the cold except for when I'm not in the cold. Well, it's, we're inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. When Sarah, I'm outside, yeah. Sarah Spivey, it is going to oh, warm up guys. today? Yes, it is going to warm <laughs> up today. We'll be near 70, so I, I don't think y'all can argue too much about 70 degrees. It no, feels pretty good. We can agree outside. on that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, and in fact, it's cold, though, out there right now. As we take a look at temperatures this morning, we're quickly warming. In fact, the little bug at the bottom of your screen says 41 degrees. That one updates a little bit quicker than what's on your map right now, so we're quickly warming. 37 in San Antonio. It's uh, 31 in Kerrville, 32 in Hondo, and 32 in Uvalde. We did briefly reach freezing in some places. Even saw a little bit of light frost on elevated surfaces like cars and those kinds of things. Uh, but as I mentioned, we're quickly going to warm. By noon, we'll be at 64 degrees, 70 for the afternoon high, and then quickly cooling tonight. So today is one of those days where you dress in layers. Uh, you won't need the jacket in the afternoon, but you, if you have a Saturday night plans, you will definitely want a jacket. We'll be in the 40s by midnight. So a dry and sunny into 2023, both today and tomorrow. Pretty similar weather. However, by tomorrow night into New Year's Day, I expect a cold front to move through. That'll make it windy on New Year's Day Monday. Our temperatures will be back down in the 50s. And by Tuesday, it'll even be chilly and damp. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk a little bit about Tuesday's rain chance and additional rain chances further on down in the week. More to come. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. A young woman is dead and San Antonio police say it's at the hands of her ex-boyfriend. Officers say the victim went to her ex's apartment in the 9000 block of Vista West Drive off of San Pedro Avenue to pick up her things. This happened yesterday. They say she got into a fight with her ex's new girlfriend who was there. Police say her ex got out a gun and fired multiple times, 
killing the woman. The ex-boyfriend, 27-year-old Ryan Walzer, was detained and police recovered a handgun. He is now charged with murder. We now know the name of the woman found dead in a ditch on the city's south side earlier this week. According to the medical examiner's office, the victim, 38-year-old Crystal Delgado. San Antonio police say she was found in a ditch just after midnight. This unfolding in the 6800 block of Pecan Valley. Police say she didn't have any signs of injuries. Medical examiner says they're still working to figure out how exactly she died, but this investigation is ongoing, and we do expect more information as that information becomes available. A woman tricked into opening the door to her home was kidnapped and carjacked. San Antonio police now have that suspect in jail. They arrested 26-year-old Trevor Morse, who the victim says knocked on her door, claiming to be injured. She says when she opened the door to let him in, a second person forced their way inside with a gun. Arrest records show they demanded her car keys, had an issue with the doors, and then forced her behind the wheel. The victim tells police they forced her to drive to several different locations before having her stop. Morse is facing four charges, including aggravated kidnapping and robbery. His bond is set at $235,000. Well, father and son accused of ripping off dozens of people. And now Sheriff Javier Salazar says 57-year-old Miguel Angel Cuellar Lopez and his son, 32-year-old Miguel Angel Cuellar Martinez, were running a fake business promising to build food trucks and not delivering. According to Sheriff Salazar, they were just taking people's money and taking payments from the victims, then not doing any of the work. Salazar says the father and son they scammed at least 28 people. They stole about $186,000 in total, both now facing felony theft charges. The father is under arrest, but deputies are still searching for the son. Salazar says the son may be hiding out in Mexico, and the sheriff's office is asking any more potential victims to come forward and give them a call. Well, this morning, California bracing for another round of storms, building massive sand walls, protecting homes, protecting businesses after some of these terrifying rogue waves swept through the area on Thursday. ABC's Will Carr reports on the damages that were left behind. Oh, no. oh, ah. This morning, California bracing for another round of storms as waves up to 25 feet and coastal flooding remain a threat for a large part of the state. Officials racing to protect homes and businesses, building massive sand burns after that terrifying rogue wave swept through Ventura Thursday. We're ready for the heavy surf advisory that's going to be going on through uh, Saturday. And high tide should be coming in around right around 10 o'clock. The wave smothering Judy Thomas's inn in sand and mud. I mean, the whole first floor is destroyed. The wall of water sweeping people off their feet, damaging cars. This garage crushed. Authorities shutting down the entire coastline in Ventura County after more than a dozen rescues, including this one caught on camera. Two people racing to save a lifeguard from the power of the water. At least eight people rushed to the hospital. Amazingly, nobody was killed. Things can be replaced, things can be rebuilt, but people can't. That was ABC's Will Carr reporting. Police say a foreign exchange student has been reported missing in Utah after his parents in China received a photo and ransom demand. So police in Riverdale say the 17-year-old was reported missing Thursday night. The school he was attending told police his parents contacted them saying they were sent a photo of him indicating he was abducted and a ransom demand. The FBI, U.S. Embassy in China and Chinese officials are working with local police to help find him. No suspect or suspects have been identified yet. And authorities in Colorado, they're searching for a 35-year-old woman now wanted for allegedly murdering two of her own children. The FBI confirming yesterday that it is now helping with the search of Kimberly Singler. Colorado Springs police say they were called to the Singler home after a reported burglary back on December 19th. There, police say they found a 9-year-old and 7-year-old boy killed. Singler and her 11-year-old daughter were hurt and they were treated at the scene before going to the hospital. Police say Singler was allowed to leave the hospital because they didn't have probable cause to detain her. But then on Tuesday, police issued a warrant for her arrest 
and she has not been seen since last weekend. The CDC says flu activity is high in two thirds of the country. The CDC estimates more than 7 million people have had the flu this season with 73,000 patients being hospitalized and 4,500 deaths. As we get closer to the new year, health officials are encouraging people to get a flu shot. Happening today, blood drives at several Santicos locations. As we get ready to bring in the new year, you can celebrate by helping others, donating blood to those who need it. South Texas Blood and Tissue, they are teaming up with Santicos Entertainment. They are encouraging the community to save lives. And as a thank you, Santicos is going to be giving out special offers. Santicos Casablanca, located 11,210 Alamo Ranch Parkway. They're going to be holding in the drive from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. For any more information, you can visit southtexasblood.org slash Santicos. Time now, 837, 41 degrees. Credit card skimmers, they seem to be a scam that always stick around. Coming up after the break, what signs you need to look out for so you don't fall for it. So you didn't answer the question, what is cold to you? I think under 35. Under 35. Yeah, okay. that's when I'm like, oh, it's too cold. Okay, bless you. All right. Taking a live look out there right now. It is 41, so we're not even close to you. No, it's warm. It's warm. How much me. warmer is it going to get? <laughs> we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. It is a problem that is getting worse and worse by the year. It's actually kind of terrifying. Yeah. Credit card scammers. So you've heard about them before, and some of you may have actually been scammed by them. Lee Waldman explains the telltale signs where these, sec these secretly placed devices are hiding and how to protect yourself from an attack. We use these valuable plastic cards seemingly every day for all kinds of things. Groceries, shopping, at the gas pump. But the convenience comes with a risk, now more prevalent than ever. The Fair Isaac Corporation, better known as FICO, found that debit card skimming soared from 2021 to 2022 by 368%. For the first half of 2023, those numbers were even higher than the same time the year before by 77%. In November, San Antonio police arrested Alejandro Roman Vivar for putting card skimmers on gas pumps at this quick trip on North Foster Road. Back in April, Hollywood Park Police Department posted on its Facebook page, warning people of a skimmer at a Circle K convenience store. It was a unique type of skimmer that is placed on the card receptacle, and the person who placed it doesn't need to be nearby. So what should you do? When you're pulling up to the gas station, there's a few things you should keep your eyes out for when it comes to protecting yourself from skimmers. First, check to see if there's a security seal along the panel then look to where you're gonna put your card in. If there's an external reader, go ahead, give it a tug. See if anything comes loose. And when you go to type in your pin over at the keypad, make sure to cover the top with your other hand, just in case a camera has been installed. But the gas station isn't the only place where you can find a skimmer. Skimming at bank ATMs is up 109% year over year. According to FICO, these types of skimmers are making up more of the compromised locations they are seeing. Texas as a whole had an increase of over 50% in compromised card readers, making it one of the top five states where this is happening. If you think you've been the victim of a card skimmer, give your bank a call and report to local authorities. I'm Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, uh, Lee. Oh, that was great. That was actually very informative. Now, yes, it's important. The director's like, your water bottle's on here. I drink water. I know it's crazy. He's very hydrated. I also, you know, this is honor of the Spurs. These are like Spurs Fiesta colors. Look, if we had GMSA mugs, they would be out here front they and center. Would. Maybe one day. One day. I'll keep dreaming. I'll also dream of 70 degrees. Well, you won't have to dream for long because it'll be 70 this afternoon, Max, and tomorrow, too. We just have these cold mornings and comfortable afternoons. That's how we're going to end the year. Dry and sunny to end 2023. But we will see a cold front tomorrow night after midnight into New Year's Day. That's going to set up a chilly week. And by Tuesday, it'll even be a little damp outside with some areas of rain. Let's show you a look outside right now. Beautiful view. You can see downtown San Antonio crystal clear because of the dry air. It's 37 sunny degrees outside with the dew point in the 20s. Very dry air in place means we're going to warm up quickly. We've already seen a decent warm up in Kerrville. It was in the 20s just a little while ago. Now it's back above freezing above freezing in New Braunfels, San Antonio, Gonzalez, Del Rio at 33, 35 in 
Virginia Valley, 32 in Hondo, 41 in Carrizo Springs. It's already 47 in Helotus, 42 in Rio Medina. So we're on our way to a better day without the cold start. As we look at these temperatures quickly warming, 50s by 10 in just the next hour and a half, 60s by noon. In the afternoon, 70 degrees around 3 or 4 o'clock, but don't get caught without the jacket tonight. If you have evening plans, it will quickly become chilly. We'll be in the low 50s by 8 and in the 40s by midnight. So Saturday night plans may be ending uh, the year. Just know that you need to have that jacket with you tonight. It's going to be 70 in San Antonio, 69 in Rio Medina, 71 in Bandera, 68 in Kerrville. Seguin, you'll be at 68 degrees, 71 in Floresville, 69 in Canyon Lake, and 68 in Yavaldi. Take a look at the temperature trend over the next several days. Again, another cold morning tomorrow with a comfortable afternoon, but with that front arriving early, early on New Year's Day, not only is it going to be windy, but take a look at highs over the next week. Our highs are going to be in the 40s and 50s. Tuesday will struggle to get out of the 40s because there will be areas of rain. Take a look at our next rain chance. This is a look at right around noon on Tuesday. Big upper level low across Texas going to be allowing for areas of rain, cloudy skies here in San Antonio. We'll see a little bit of a break in the rain chances Wednesday and Thursday, but by Friday, another low pressure system is going to move right in across Texas, and this one will bring us an opportunity for rain as well. How much rain are we talking? Well, like the last several systems, the healthier rainfall is going to be east of San Antonio toward Houston, but even in San Antonio on Tuesday and Friday combined, we could see up to about half an inch of rainfall. So not a drought buster by any means, but we will be looking at some much needed rain, higher amounts out to the east. Let's put it all together for you in the seven day forecast. Nice and comfortable in the afternoons today and tomorrow, but you will need to dress in layers because of the cold evenings and the cold mornings. All next week though, keep the jacket handy all day. You won't necessarily need to dress in layers because we're going to start off chilly and our highs are going to struggle to get out of the 50s most days. And even on Tuesday, we'll struggle to get out of the 40s with that opportunity for rain. The windy conditions, not great news for the mountain cedar. I've got the pollen count coming up in just a few minutes here. Thank you, Sarah. Hmm? Thank you, Sarah. 847, 41 degrees. Preparations are underway in New York to bring in the new year. And security is high on that priority list. After the break, what officials are saying about what they're doing to make sure everyone is safe. You've been playing the lotto? I've been playing the lotto, Max. My girlfriend told me she has a minor lotto addiction. Same. Been a big, oh. Same. Okay. All right, well, let's take a look <laughs> at these numbers. Pick three, 911, Fireball 7. Daily 4, 2527, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 911, 18, 27, 29. Here's, well, this one's not the big one. This no. is Mega Millions. 11, 27, 30, 62, 70, Mega Ball. 10 mega plier 3 but hey powerball tonight mm -hmm. up to 760 million tell page to get a ticket max oh too much money lost <laughs> Good morning and welcome back. New Year's Eve celebrations soon getting underway as we are ready to ring in 2024 and actually this is you know this makes me feel better. Security is tight around the country especially in the heart of New York City. That's right. So Times Square transforms into the biggest party in the world every New Year's and NYPD says they're prepared for anything. Thousands of officers getting ready to deploy across the area. Police planning to expand their security perimeter as they look for anything out of place or suspicious people. They'll be using dogs, drones and spectator checkpoints. We know how to safeguard events of this size. Uh, we have major events going on at one time in the city and with the collaboration of all of our agencies and organizations, we get it right and we do it right all the time. So there are no specific or credible threats yet, but NYPD is encouraging people to go out, enjoy themselves, reminding everyone if you see something, say something. And NYPD, actually, fun fact, they have their own counterterrorism unit wow. inside the department, which is unique because usually local police will defer to federal agencies in situations like that because of New York City. They obviously need to be equipped and, as the mayor was saying, prepared for anything. Time now, 852, 44 degrees. He received a video game console this year as Did a you? gift. No. Did you get a PS5? I'm not, I'm not a figure. What are we at now? I'm not a gardener. I'm not a gamer. Uh, oh, I like that. So after the break, we'll have a review of some of the big upcoming game titles releasing in 2024. Our kingdom 
is cursed. The prince has been kidnapped. The prince is back. Prince of Persia, The Last Crown, marks the franchise's first major release since 2010. The action platformer arrives January 18th for PC, Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. You think you're a team now? You think you can stop us? Thought you'd never ask. When a supervillain turns superheroes bad, it's up to the bad guys to save the day. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was developed by Rocksteady Studios, creators of the acclaimed Batman Arkham games, and unleashes on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox consoles February 2nd. Donkey Kong. Mario. Here we go. A classic rivalry is rekindled in Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Originally released on the Game Boy Advance system, the updated game finds Mario out to rescue mini Mario toys from DK. It's on like Donkey Kong and Mario when the game arrives on the Nintendo Switch February 16th. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Alright, so we alluded to this earlier. The last Powerball drawing of the year, it is tonight. $760 million jackpot up for grabs. It is the fourth Powerball jackpot to exceed half a billion dollars just in 2023. Yesterday, Mike Osterhage and I were trying to figure out the lump sum with taxes mm. and everything. So Wednesday's drawing didn't leave everyone empty handed. At least one person in Texas won $2 million and at least one other in California won a million. Good luck. See, I don't need the whole 760. Two yeah. million is more than enough. Uh, 200 like, is Maybe enough. like 10 million. I take 10. Okay. I'm now Not that I'm high maintenance <laughs> or anything. 856, 44 degrees. We'll be right back.